Okay. I think I think we're recording. <laughs> Who knows? Is Mercury retrograde? We could just be talking to ourselves. <laughs> I know. I know, right? <laughs> oh well, one of us is well, recording. It'll well, we'll send to the other if if yes. it doesn't work. <laughs> we're gonna go ahead and call on our friends Michael and Gary. Just to help some sisters out here. We've got to be down here doing the human stuff with all the planets. But uh, <laughs> hello, everybody. Welcome back to Esoteric Atlanta. Of course, I'm joined here with my my friend Emmy from Holistic Genie, and we got a few things we're going to talk about today. Um, one being the astrology of what the fuck is going on right now because energies are batshit crazy. And also, before we get into that, we're also going to talk about the upcoming 60 day challenge. And I also just before we got into that, I was ch chatting with Emmy before we started filming. Um, as you guys know, so today is Sunday, January 8th. And today was the first morning that I actually allowed for people to come into my class at Sacred Garden Yoga in Marietta. And um, so as you see here, this happened this morning, I had people sign in virtually. And then also I had my class of, of regular people. Now I want to I'm going to put the link to this down in the description box below for anybody who wants to join, you're welcome to join. I had I did a video yesterday kind of talking about this and promoting this, but something that I want to kind of reiterate again. Um, I had a comment where somebody thought I had a chip on my shoulder because I was warning people about this class. So my Ashtanga class at Sacred Garden Yoga is the most advanced class on the schedule. Typically, Ashtanga is the most advanced class on the schedule. And this is why I'm putting this warning out to you guys. So I, as I did yesterday, in the description box below, I will put a link to Morgan uh, Ashtanga Nurses uh, Half Primary Series videos. So if you are not familiar with this, you can watch it from him, maybe practice with him, seeing see if this is something that you're interested in. Because in the primary series of Ashtanga, the only reason why it's called primary series is because it's physical therapy. It's Yoga Chikitsa. And in the system of Ashtanga, there are six different series. And you learn them in order. You, you can't leapfrog. You have to learn them in order, consecutive order. And that is because you can't do nerve therapy until you've done this. You can't. You can't heal the subtle body until you've healed the gross body and so just because it's primary series does not mean that it is a beginner friendly class and so especially if there is no mysore program which i don't have a mysore program at ashtanga or at sacred garden yoga so emmy you had ex you are now an ashtanga practitioner is half primary series an easy class no it is not it is not i I am still, still having soreness doing quarter primary. And I've been doing this consistently uh, four days a week for three months. You know, my my stuff came up early, so I, I think that I have a little bit more of a difficult time with it. Than you're, the, you're one of the lucky ones. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm going to take your word for that. I keep telling myself, okay, I'm, I'm fortunate. This is fortunate. You know, but my ego will come in and be like, you should be farther along than this by now. Why is this stuff still making you sore? You know what what what's wrong with you? Why why can these other people just whip right through and and you're still like sweating and huffing and puffing and wanting to puke at the fundamental sequence. Like, but I just keep telling myself, you know, it's okay. Bryce has all kinds of years in this. And she says that this is a good thing. So I'm just going to take her word. For Listen, it. I've been sore for 16 years. People that don't practice Ashtanga yoga laugh when I say that. I think they think I'm joking. I'm not joking. There is not a day that goes by that I am not sore. There's not something in my body that to this morning, my triceps are sore. You know, there's not, and that to me, you do learn how to handle it differently. I think the more you get used to it, but I, I really, so Emmy, if somebody is brand spanking new to yoga, should they be doing a virtual Ashtanga class? Absolutely not. No, you, you should. You need, yeah. You need a teacher. You need to. Um, do the intellectual part of the practice, learning the poses, making sure that you have good form in each of the poses. This takes weeks to get to the point where you are in a meditative state doing 
the, the poses. It takes a lot of time to learn them. And that's an intellectual process. I'm still learning it. And I've been doing it for three months consistently. So definitely, if you have never done Ashtanga, you should not do a lead class right off the bat. Yes. Um, I suggest getting um, Kino McGregor's book. I can have that in below as well. Yeah. Yeah. Learning about the poses, learning a little bit about its history, how important it is, the time of day that you do it is important. Um, you know, making sure that you don't drink water while you're practicing, making sure that you practice before you eat. Um, all of these things are very, very important. And if you don't know them and you, and you just go to this, uh, lead class and follow along by imitating, you can really, really hurt yourself. Absolutely. And that's, and that's my biggest fear because when I have a beginner that comes to me live in person, I can, even though I'm directing a full lead primary class, I can show the beginner modifications. And there are some postures that regardless of your past experience with yoga, I will immediately from the very beginning show you modifications because that's how potentially dangerous it could be because there are advanced postures in the primary series. In the primary series, you are putting at the back half of primary, you're putting your legs behind your head. You know, I'm not going to do that with a beginner. That's that's going to take some. I would be a psychopath if I did that with a beginner. You know, so and so the the ladies that we had joined the Zoom this morning took our yoga intensive, and so they were prepared. They knew what to expect, and that is my. It's not me having a chip on my shoulder. What a sad state of the world we are in. If a professional like myself can't give a warning about something without it being perceived as something negative. And that's that's very sad. My job, I'm the only female authorized in the state of Georgia. I take that very seriously. My job first and foremost is to make sure that I am keeping the student as safe as possible under the conditions allowed to me. What do I mean by that? If you are logging on to take this class through Zoom, I can't adjust you, obviously. I can't sit there and tap you on the shoulder and say, hey, let me help you with that, which sometimes I can help a student prop them up, help them so it, this, the pose becomes safer. You are strictly relying off of what you hear, my my verbal cues and what you're seeing. And the way I set the, the class up is because I, I don't demonstrate in the classes. That's that's kind of a no-no in Ashtanga. So I set the, the camera up. So Cindy, who's on this channel a lot, Cindy, who owns Sacred Garden, she's the one basically you're watching her practice. And so with that being said, my class is absolutely open to anyone who wants to do it. I just want to make sure that you are making an informed decision when you sign up and so if you've never done Ashtanga before and you really want to take my virtual class on Sunday mornings which are going to be open to you from now on I'm going to put again Ashtanga nurses um, YouTube of half primary series down in the and it's just the half primary series it's just the first half it's not even the full primary series I'm gonna put it down in the description box for you to watch him doing it get the book like as 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 Emmy saying uh kino's books you un have more of an understanding of what's because there is a huge there i mean i could probably do like a 72 hour workshop no joke just on the first half of primary series as far as everything that's happening in physically spiritually mentally uh the cleanse that's happening where the organs are placed why the organs are placed in a particular way why the binds cover the kidneys why the foot goes in the stomach at sir they're they're the devil is in the details or i, I guess i should say krishna krishna is in the details the god is in the details of this practice right so um so but but when you're first starting because the practice is so potent if you don't have that understanding it could go wrong and that's my concern as a teacher is i want everybody to have the best possible introduction to this practice that they can have because this practice has changed my life this practice has saved my life um and i i don't want you to hurt yourself because you're trying to keep up with people who have been doing this for over 10 years 
you know um and so and, and good job to the ladies who signed on this morning they were part of our yoga intensive and so they were prepared and they kept up and they did a really good job and so um i will put you in and Feel free, you guys, if you're watching this and you're confused about what I'm talking about because you're used to um, more of the fake yoga, I understand that. Ask me questions in the comment section. I will be more than happy to try to help you navigate this because, Emmy, you've done a lot of the, like, the Western yoga, the fake yoga, right? It's different, isn't it? A lot different. It's a lot different. It It's, it's night and day different. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, you know, and I will say, though, we have a lot of Cindy's, um, Cindy Shala, Sacred Garden Yoga, her mystery school, she likes to call it her mystery school. You know, Cindy is on the Anusara background, which is more of an Iyengar background. She has great classes that you can sign up for where it is more beginner friendly as far as the, the, the postures in the Ashtanga series are more complicated postures as far as, I mean, towards the middle part of primary series, you're literally putting yourself into a pretzel. And so um, if you are new to this practice, if you're new to yoga, it might be, you know, if you don't have options to go to an actual teacher, start taking some of Cindy's classes, because at least then you can start to get familiar with these term the terminology like what is half padmasana mean well pada pada is foot so half padmasana is pulling the foot into the hip and so you'll start to get used to these terms and stuff because you're welcome anybody's welcome to take any any um any of these classes isabel she is actually one of our assistants at ashtanga yoga atlanta so she has a huge ashtanga background so you can guys can um, take uh bridget is one of my students so, um, so you guys, you can jump in and take any of these classes that you want. Um, but my class on Sunday mornings is definitely the most advanced. Anytime you see a lead primary series and Ashtanga lead primary series, it is the most advanced class on the schedule. So just be aware of that. You're welcome. All are welcome. There's no criteria you need to make to come. I don't care if you're overweight. I don't care if you don't have great yoga clothes. None of that matters to me. What matters to me is that you are making an informed decision. And you understand that this is going to be hard. Let's t how much do you sweat in this, Emmy? <laughs> <laughs> Your mat's a slip and slide, or it, it it will be as you as you progress um, by the end of the fundamental sequence. Like before oh, yeah. you get before you even get to the beginning part of primary, you're covered in sweat. Yeah, which is why as you. Now, I will say that I did not sweat like this right off the rip. It was a pro a progressive thing. Like the more the more I do it, the more I sweat. Yeah, no, that happens. And that's the I've listened to personal trainers speak about this too. The fitter you are, the more you sweat. So I I've I've laughed about this before. I don't like to do any form of exercise in front of romantic partners because I look like a drowned rat with albert einstein hair when i'm done with my practice it is disgusting so and i put some of some stuff up of me practicing and doing bar and you can even see me sweating there and so um just just know that that's that's normal i have i have clothes that i teach in and clothes that i practice in that's how bad the sweating is because smells come off of you that <laughs> <laughs> i'm always very shocked <laughs> where is that coming from and it's your body detoxing i mean the 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 twisting it's getting you know exercise in itself is great but with yoga especially something like ashtanga because the postures are so detail oriented it's forcing your organs you know i i tell my students all the time we're not looking for flexibility of your body that i don't give it i don't care how flexible you are that Listen, there are so many flexible assholes out there. Your flexibility has nothing to do with the value of you as a human being. But what is important is your flexibility of your organs. Um, and people don't talk about that too much. The organs, as we get older, they get more sedentary. And um, we want to keep the organs, the vital organs, uh, flexible. And so all the twisting, all that kind of stuff, the going upside down and downward up, it's moving the organs around. And so what's happening is your, your organs are also kind of getting wrung out. And so all these, these toxins that's been stored in your body for the longest time start to come out through your skin, through sweat. Um, as my teacher says, uh, you're sweating your poisons out. 
which is a very Indian thing to say. We well, you say you're detoxing. They say you're sweating your poisons out, but you are. That's what's happening. And so you're giving your organs that chance that to do something that they probably really haven't been able to do until yoga, even running and all these other forms of exercise are not going to get into your organs quite like yoga will. And so that, that organ, um, uh, organ uh, health and vitality is super, super, super important. And so just be mindful of that. Um, we, I mean, I do have a yoga course coming up. I might have to push it back a couple of weeks, depending on what's going on with our challenge, which we'll talk about. Um, I was planning on starting at January 22nd, but it might have to get pushed back. So we'll see, but I will put a link to that down in the description box below guys. It's the combination. It's the, 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 um, Yankee, what were, we, what were we calling it? <laughs> um, the Yaki course, yoga and Reiki, where we, we, we had a great group last time. Three of the ladies that came this morning to the Zoom uh, virtual class were from the yoga intensive. It was a great group, an amazing group. It was very successful for our first ever collaboration and virtual. So we collabed and we did it virtually for the very first time. And so it was fantastic. So, um, so yes, I'll put all that information down in the description box below. But what should we talk about next, Emmy? Ast astrology or the 60-day challenge? Um, let's do the astrology first because when I share what I'm going to share about the astrology, you'll see how the 60-day challenge was divinely placed. I'm going to say that I was telling Emmy before we start filming, like, y'all, I'm telling you, it's God. I'm just the conduit <laughs> typing away. <laughs> um, it's all God. But go ahead, Emmy, take it away with our um, astrology and what a shit show we're going through right now. <laughs> yes. Okay. So I'm just going to start off with an analogy. God has really um, been using this same analogy for me um, dang near every day because it's been a rough, a rough month. I'll say that. Um, but it's it's all necessary to become who we're meant to become. Um, so I switched my supplements, I don't know, about six months ago or so, and I take um the superfood powder. It's it's a it's a food, a real food supplement instead of pill form. And you have to take a scoop of it and put it on top of a glass of water. Well, the scoop of powder will just sit there until I take a spoon and stir it up and mix it around and go the other way and go back and forth. And I have to cause this great disturbance to this powder in order for it to become what it's supposed to be, this awesome, amazing superfood drink for my body. The same thing is happening with all of us. Our nervous systems are being stirred. Everything in us on a cellular level is being disrupted and squeezed and um, shaken and mixed up and stirred so that we can become the better, lighter, more loving version of ourselves. Um, so even though it's really, really hard, and I've been going through this the same as y'all, it, it's, listen to me, y'all, if I came to the South, Bryce, I would be talking in a Southern accent in like five minutes. I can't not I can't not copy accents. I've been like that Love since it. I was a little girl. I heard Stephanie <laughs> say it on a video. She said, all y'all. And she didn't even flinch. And I was like, ooh, she said, all y'all. Um, my, my my bestie up in Canada, he'll, he'll be like, y'all, A. Like, he says it too. So <laughs> we're going to make y'all a thing. <laughs> not just yes. in the Southeast. Not just in the Southeast. <laughs> right. Ooh, so it's been it's been a doozy. Um. So we came into the new year with uh, a few planets in retrograde. We've got Uranus and Mars and Mercury. And what's what's interesting about Mercury and Mars retrograde is that they are uh, accentuating or amplifying each other because Mars is retrograde in Gemini and Mercury is the ruler of Gemini. So Mercury is like amplifying this Gemini Mars retrograde. And then we've got um, Mercury retrograde and it's Capricorn season. And, you know, everybody knows Mercury retrograde when that comes up. It's it's all the R.E. words, replenish, renew, revisit, reevaluate, you know, rejuvenate. All of the, the re words is a great time. Um, 
to, to focus on for Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrograde in this Capricorn season is highlighting all of the Capricorn themes and Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. So all the Saturn themes are alive right now. And if you, if you get your chart, can I share my screen so I can? Yeah, you have permission. Okay. Okay. This is my brother's chart. I used it last time I wanted to make reference. He's, he passed away. So I'm sure he won't mind. Um, but I wanted to show you guys where you can go look at your own chart and see where this Capricorn, Saturn, Mercury retrograde is highlighting things for you. So <clears throat> if we look at um, Capricorn, which is right here, we've got, wait a second, yeah, Capricorn right here. Um, so in, in this chart, my brothers, this would be the second house. See this two right here? And three, these are indicating the house. So this is in his second house. So if you look where you have Capricorn, um, it's your second house. So the, the, these themes are being, now hold on a second here. Can I switch to a different, can you guys see that? Yes. The 12 houses? Yes. Okay. So the second house is all about value, money, self-worth, and possessions. So if my if my brother were alive, these are the themes that would be activated right now at this time for him. So if you go look at your chart and see what what how which house Capricorn is in, um, you can see what's being highlighted. Another place to look is also where you have your natal Saturn. So his natal Saturn is in Libra. So all of these themes are also being activated. This is his 11th and 12th house. So the 11th and 12th house is friendships, hopes and dreams, community, endings, and spirituality. So you're going to find really, really strong themes in these areas. Um, so you can go look up. And, and when I looked up in my chart, what was being activated, I was like, well, that makes a lot of sense. Like puzzle pieces were were fitting together. So I want, really wanted to show you guys where to look in your own chart so that you can have a better understanding of yourself and what's being highlighted for you right now personally. Okay, so I'll stop share here for a second. Okay, so... When we're in Capricorn season, we're taking a good, hard, long look at your entire life, basically. Um, what you need to address and heal, what needs to change, what you need to let go of that may not be serving you anymore, what you may need to add in. Um, this is just, Capricorn season is not fun for me because I don't, I don't like <laughs> I don't like doing that stuff. And some of the things that have been highlighted for me are like media and technology, my website. <laughs> it's coming together. It, it will get done. It's just not fun. Um, so I'm sure the things that are being highlighted for you right now too may not be fun, but it's just an opportunity to look at what your higher self wants you to get done, wants you to get rid of, wants you to reevaluate, wants you to add in or change. Um, so yeah, like for example, if you have an addiction and you are finding yourself, like if your addiction is shopping and you're finding horrible urges to shopping and you're spending way too much money and it's really, really bothering you and you're feeling really bad about that, it's just that particular theme screaming at you that, hey, please address me. You have some issues here. Look at this and work through it. Don't beat yourself up. It's just your higher self going right here, this right here. Um, so it, it's really hard not to enter a guilt shame cycle when we do things that really, really bother us. But if that's going on for you right now, just know that it's just 
God, source, the universe, your higher self pointing out what it wants you to look at and heal. Okay, so I'm going to go back to 2020 right now. In January of 2020, we had a Pluto and Saturn conjunction. And if you think about what happened after that, it was, we began a new cycle. We began a new cycle of like reprogramming, restructuring, reframing pretty much everything. Finances, food, education, business, literally everything started a new cycle. So we're still in that process. You know, it takes time. It doesn't happen overnight. And so, um, sorry, just looking at my notes here. Yeah, so we can we can look at things and and try to reevaluate how to go forward from a a standpoint of oneness. And what's so interesting about what's going on right now that started in 2020 is that Saturn and the Sun just made another conjunction. So it's bringing up that that same stuff. Um it's a great month to review what you don't want. What you don't, what are you going to get rid of? Like what is, what are some habits or some things that you are doing that no longer serve you? What can you do to change things up to make your life flow a little bit more, make it a little bit more easy for you to get something done? How can I let go of this particular thing that is taking my time and energy that I'm used to doing, but really isn't serving me or my family or my community? Um, and these the first three weeks of January are a lot of internal energy. It's like this time of forced resting and nesting. And we're being stirred up and distraught, disturbed and distorted inside so that like I was saying with the analogy we can become what what we're meant to be and it's really uncomfortable I can't tell you how many times I have cried this past these past few weeks and it's, haven't we been like messing each other in tears yes it's a little bit personal so I wanted to kind of hit on that because I think people who are new to this uh, spiritual life and understanding our, our place in the cosmos. It, it goes back to that story of Krishna when he was a child. He was called Govinda and his mother saw him eating dirt and she went to pull the dirt out of his mouth and she saw all the cosmos inside of him. And so you are bound to be affected by the planetary movement. Um, that's why like in Ashtanga Yoga, we don't practice on the moon days because a full moon and a new moon is going to affect your body. And so we respect the nature and we back off on those days. You are nature and nature is God. And so I wanted to kind of highlight that because I want people to understand when we talk about the guilt and the shame, these last couple of days, both Emmy and Stephanie know this, I almost lost my shit. Like literally almost said, fuck it. And just, I was not comfortable in my own skin. I, I, and I knew, and I'm someone who knows what's going on and I have known for a while about the astrology. So can we hit on that a little bit, Emmy, just so people don't, you're not crazy. You're not, what, you're, what you might be feeling, the agitation, the, I mean, I was telling Emmy before we started filming, I literally, I'm not, I'm not a person like when I channel anger, when I feel anger, which we know is hurt, it's usually a form of self-sabotage. I'm not someone that reacts like I'm not, I don't have like anger issues as far as that's just a, somebody, somebody else. I'm not, it's just how we, 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 we channel that. But this time around, I wanted to cry and punch a hole in the wall at the same time. You know, and so, and, and Emmy is right. It's natural to feel this, but it's stuff that's trying to be pulled up by God, by your higher self to say, we need to look at some of these things. Um, it's not a bad thing, but I just want to kind of like, if you have been feeling anxious, if you have been feeling not yourself, not yourself, I mean, what are, what are we, what are ourselves? That's mm -hmm. normal. And it's nothing to, to be ashamed of or to fear. Don't fear yourself. Um, you know, I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Emmy, but I just want people to know that like these things that are happening are not just like 
things we're talking about, you are literally going to feel them in your body mm -hmm. and your mind. Yeah. So if, if you can take an observer's position, even though it's really hard, all of these emotions and these different things that are being stirred up, if you can take the position of a witness or an observer and, and maybe write down the major things that are coming up for you, um, like I was saying, this is a time of forced nesting or resting where we're, where we are being forced to look internally at what's going on. We're being triggered with different things. Um, we are having a lot of, um, really busy, really muddy, really confusing thoughts. Um, communication is being in disrupted and interrupted. So if you could just, observe what's going on, what's coming up for you, write it down. And then, okay, because this is going to shift. Okay, the first three weeks of January, like I was saying, are really internalized. Everything is about what's going on inside of you. It's really, really hard. I've had a rough time, rough, really rough time. But by the 22nd of this month, all planets are direct. Nothing will be in retrograde. So we are going to be like that steam locomotive after it gets going, like, let's go. Let's go get this stuff done. So we're looking at ourselves internally. All of this disturbing, disruptive stuff is coming to the surface for us to look at, write it down. And then on the 22nd and going forward, we can do something about it. The energies are going to be there to support. Sweetie, you're on camera. Hold on one second, you guys. <laughs> all right, you guys. Yes, the uh, the joys of motherhood, I'm sure you guys all know, which I know we're going to talk about. So um, we're, we're going to, the joys of motherhood, I was The joys saying. of motherhood, yes. <laughs> oh, to be that free again, that young and that free. I, I'd let him come in, but he's in his underoos and... <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure 20, 20 years down the road, he'd be like, really, mom, you really, you put that on YouTube. <laughs> oh, my niece, my niece is going to kill me. I have a picture on my Instagram of a text message. My sister sent me when Jacqueline, my niece went poo poo in the potty for the first time and wanted to FaceTime and tell me Aww. I have the text message on my Instagram. So she's going to freaking kill me when she's like, Aww. 15. Oh my gosh. Um, but to be that free again, I would love to be in that place where I could just run around in my underwear and not care. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Okay, so let's see. So so Mars goes direct on the 12th. Mercury goes direct on the 18th. And Uranus goes direct on the 22nd. So after the 22nd, all planets are direct. Nothing's in retrograde. So we have this huge shift in energy from let's look inside to let's get this done. Let's do something about it. Let's take action. And it is the perfect time because that's when the 60 day challenge starts. Yes. And I did not. So I'm going to, I was telling Emmy, so I, the 30 day challenge we did earlier this year that most of you guys participated in, that was something that God kind of whispered to me. Like I just kind of took my education and put it together. And then I heard 60 days. And so I said, okay, let's do 60. And then I was going to start it on January 1. But then I heard that March 23rd is a powerhouse day astrologically. So I thought, huh, let me back it up 60 days. And it just so happens because this is how God works. That what's 60 days from March before March 23rd? It's January 21st, Saturday, January 21st. So this is all divinity. This is all God working through everybody to to because we know that the the macro is a reflection of the micro. We can't change the macro until we change ourselves. And I think you know we have this incredible signal support group with over 200 people in that group. And everybody is supporting each other while doing their own work. And so everybody has a role to play. And when you take your work and you combine it together with all these people, there you go. There's your storm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And, and, you know, we're, we're not the only group that's doing this. I mean, I, I, in, in, in the Reiki community that I'm in, there's um, quite a few people that are, are doing 
uh, worldwide meditations once a month, sending Reiki to the peace grids that are placed around different spots in the world. And, you know, there's hundreds of people doing this. So we have our group, we have that group. I'm sure there are other groups around the world and other places that are doing the same thing we are. Every person who's involved in a yoga lineage who has a serious yoga practice, that's what yoga is. It's shadow work. They're doing it too. Um, You know, people in Tai Chi. So we're a small fraction of a group. I'm Marnie Alton, the bar teacher that I promote through the challenge. She's big. She never calls it shadow work, but I know what she's, when she talks, she's, 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 she's speaking of the shadow side and, and observe like, like she said in one of her classes, I love the way she said it. We don't truly wake up until we drop into our body Mm because in our body, we feel things. And that's part of Emmy's played a big part in creating this next 60 day challenge. Uh, We're going to be talking about grief and Emmy handled that section. And we're incorporating the exercise with the grief and how the physical body is a manifestation of the thoughts. And so, and and I've gotten so many, I've gotten countless emails, Emmy, from people telling me, how much they've realized and i really i mean maybe this is my tinfoil hat coming on i feel like the controllers created a world where exercise became a punishment became Mm -hmm. something we did to punish ourselves whereas you if you go back and look at these old mystery schools that were doing shadow work stuff they didn't they didn't call that's a that's a modern term to say shadow work but they were working through that stuff they all involved exercise and I guarantee you, they weren't trying to look good for in a bathing suit. It was about understanding that you've been given this beautiful template that is your body. And your body is being direct. It's, the, it's a dance of the Shiva and the Shakti. The body is the Shakti of the Shiva, the expression of the soul. And so many people have emailed me how their perception on working out has changed. Mm-hmm. And that's amazing. Amazing. The workout, it's supposed to trigger you. Like it's workouts are going to, that, that's what they're supposed to do. They, you know, that's what, you, you know, if you're getting pissed off in an Ashtanga class, well, good. The practice did its job. Yes. Now, what are you going to do with it? You know, what are you going to do with it now? And, and, and that's what I've, even though Emmy and I are like yoga people, I also do bar as well. Um, I've incorporated things like kickboxing and in, in dance into this because there are so many different modalities and through time, As you change, your modality might change, but that's okay because what works for you right now is what works for you right now. And so with the 60 day challenge coming up, it's going to be a a lot of the same stuff from the 30 day, but more in depth and more in different things as well coming up. We've got uh, the grief work with Emmy. We're going to be looking again at childhood uh, trauma again, like we did in the, and that's one thing too, Emmy. I mean, if someone's new to shadow work, like, we covered childhood trauma in the last 30 days, but we're covering it again because does it ever really go away? I think that honestly, that's where most of our trauma comes from. Mm-hmm. You know, especially if we had abusive relationships during our formative years, you know, that'll set the stage for your entire life. That is a huge prison to break out of. Yeah. A huge, huge prison. Um, yeah. It, it really does. I don't think that we can revisit childhood trauma enough. <laughs> and that's what, and that's what I'm hoping is these challenges do for people. It's not a one and done. It's not like you finish and you're done with shadow work forever, but it's giving you because knowledge is power and knowledge protects and knowledge is infinite. So it gives you the power. And I did this in the last challenge and I'm doing it again in this challenge towards the end where I'm going to set you up and then have you figure out what workout you're going to do that day. Because or then you're going to pick a different meditation so that you understand that you are gaining information about yourself. You're journaling every day to, fit, to, to, to examine yourself, to observe yourself so that you, moving forward, once the challenge is over, know how to continue the process. And so many people were affected by the Kuan Yin story. I'm greatly affected by the Kuan Yin story. We're doing that again in this challenge. So you know if you were greatly affected by that key code and that meditation, you know that, you know, after we finish the 60-day channel, maybe a, a month later, revisit it again. Revisit that key code again. Revisit, see what else. Because it's kind of like it's kind of like digging for treasure, right? Like you pull up one gold nugget of shit. And then you put it away, you clean it, put it away, and then you dig more and you find another gold nugget of shit that you got to clean 
<laughs> the manure off and put away in the bank, right? And so it's it's never, and I heard Marnie Alton say something. Marnie Alton does a lot of challenges as well. And she's doing a 10 day challenge right now. And she posted something, um, I follow her board, where the mantra for this, she doesn't go into as much detail as we do, but she puts uh, the mantra for the day was, I don't have to work out. I get to work out. Mm -hmm. I don't have, right. <laughs> and this morning, I will say, I told my yoga class this morning, my alarm went off at four. I walked into the kitchen, which is my glamorous yoga shala is my kitchen. And I was standing in my, my, my pajamas and I was like, I really don't want to do this. I'm so tired. And I sat there half asleep in my pajamas and I said, no, you don't have to do yoga. You get to do yoga. <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> you know, we don't have to work on ourselves. We get to work on ourselves. And I know Emmy's been doing this for a while. I've been doing this for a while. It's fucking hard. It's so hard. But it's, but it's so, so worth it. Funny. It is so when you it. when you can understand your own patterning, and it's always the destructive patterning, like the good patterns of ourselves we don't even think about because but the destructive stuff when we say, Wow, I'm doing this to myself because of X, Y, and Z, and now I have the power. I have the power to course correct. And that's my power as a human being is that i can course correct and i can i can work through this karma and that's what karma is isn't it it's just working through our shit, right yeah mm -hmm. exactly so um yeah so we can yeah. take the, polish the shit off the gold and put it in the bank yes yes <laughs> so yeah from from about the 21st 22nd on um, we are going to have a huge energy shift and we're going to feel this motivation, this forward movement. Let's take action. Let's get stuff done. Let's let's go. And <clears throat> I'm really excited about that. Um, I'm really excited about that. Venus th uh, this month is also making quite a few aspects. Um, it's squaring Uranus in, and the North Node in Taurus and squaring the south node in Scorpio. And it's also um, making a conjunction with Saturn and Aquarius. So there's a lot of Venus themes being activated this month too. So if you're if you're feeling a lot of stuff going on in your heart space, if there are things coming up that are really, really troubling to you, triggering for you, um, concerning love and heart space. Yeah. <laughs> um Lo I just want to say something about love. Love is the most powerful frequency there is. So if you have something coming up where, where you have this just awful resentment or just deep, deep pain, if, if you can send the situation or send the purple, the purple, send the purple, violet flame. Okay, yeah. Send the purple. <laughs> God knows what he's doing. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, send love to these situations and these people and do it until you feel a shift in your heart space. And yeah, violet flame. Why not turn on the violet flame, you know, while you're doing that and, and burn away those, those energies that are just so detrimental to you. Well, it's interesting you say that, Emmy, because the half wars talk about that as well in the half war material. Um, about sending or no maybe it was well, it was Hathor Anta was the Emerald Tablets I believe that spoke about that about sending love and I do when I and I'm after I've done my practice and when I'm kind of meditating I do feel like I try to pull the energy up into that from my groin basically which is the base of, of Molabunda up through Shashumna into the heart space which then sends it out you know it can't hurt it can't hurt anybody can it no Absolutely. Yes. And then, um, boy, sometimes I can't even read my own writing. <laughs> so Slam then our pre-retrograde. Pre yeah, I know. I'm pretty much to the end of my notes here. Um, so we'll have a new moon, uh, on the 21st, which is the day that we start the challenge. How beautiful is that? A new moon is renewal. New, new cycle. Yeah. New cycle. Um, also on the 21st, guys, 
um, is the first group Reiki session that I'm offering. And we're going to be doing journaling prompts to come up with our one word mantra for the year. And then I'm going to do a guided meditation and Reiki healing to embody and integrate your one word mantra for the year. Um, and so that's on the 21st. And I'm going to, I'm going to gear these group Reiki sessions around the new moon, full moon cycles. So the following, um, the following group Reiki session will be on February 4th or 5th. It, it's on Saturday. They're on Saturdays at 2 p.m. That's my 40th birthday, February 4th. It's a Saturday. All right. Moon. So I've been very, very anxious about that. I don't know why I'm so anxious, but let me show you guys. It's, it's amazing that Emmy is doing this because I'm going to go ahead and show you guys day one of our Emmy didn't know I was going to do this of our of our 60 day challenge. And maybe I can actually add this add your channel link. I'll have everybody's channels on there to day one because it's awesome you're doing this because let me show you guys how we started this. So day one is Saturday, January 21st. We have coordinated the 60 day challenge to end on March 23rd due to March 23rd being a very important astrological day for us globally. We normally would not start a challenge on a rest day. This particular challenge is the exception. If you feel the need to take a 40 to 6 minute walk today, you may do so. On this self-study Saturday rest day, your challenge is to mentally, spiritually, emotionally, and physically get yourself prepared for the work at hand. And so um, for your self-study, research shadow work. What is shadow work? What is the shadow side? Why is working through your triggers important to your growth spiritually? How is exercise an integral part of shadow work? Here is some some journals. Uh, why are you doing this challenge? What do you hope to accomplish during this challenge? What is your intention? Is there something you're nervous about regarding this challenge? What are you most resistant to regarding this challenge? What are you most excited about in this challenge? And um, yeah, so that's actually pretty cool that Emmy's doing something. Um, and so I'm going to go ahead when before I send this out, I'm going to edit in to add uh, information about Emmy's challenge so that you guys can participate because what a great way to kick off six, 60 days is a lot like like I, I know I've been doing this 60 days is a long time <laughs> so you know it's what a great way to um to do I, I color coded this challenge too to make it a little bit more easy easier but um yeah what a great way to kick off the the, the shadow challenge is to do that with you Emmy yeah, I'm, I'm excited. I, I, I plan on doing these indefinitely from here on out. Um, I, I initially wanted to um, create something like this for my future Reiki students so that we could have a regular meeting time to um, do Reiki and discuss different Reiki topics and answer questions and, and things. But um, just <clears throat> having um, limited time and and people having limited resources you know not everybody can afford what it costs for a reiki session one on one so i really wanted to um offer people a um another avenue if you will and where cost isn't a deterrent you know if you can donate great please do um this does this does take a lot of time and and effort um if you can't donate pay it forward with someone else or contact me we can barter you know it it's yeah. whatever and and five dollars ten dollars whatever you know you can afford three dollars it, it doesn't matter the point is that you are trading energy money is just energy your time is energy doing something nice for someone in your community is energy you just want to make sure that whatever you're doing and receiving is a good balance you know and that's all it is. Money is just energy. It's just a form of energy. And it's it, it's an exchange. Yeah. So. Well, and I want to say that too. I'm glad you brought up the whole money thing because I have gotten some emails. I just want to clarify. The 60 day challenge is completely free. The templates. Um, what cost is the yoga intensive that's within me and me? That's a whole separate thing. Um, but the 60 day challenge is completely free all of the exercise everything's found on youtube i made sure they were all found on youtube there is going to be one added bar class in this challenge that wasn't in the last challenge that does require like if you want to use like two to three pound hand weights but if you can't afford to go buy the two three pound hand weights you can do it without weights or you can grab water bottles or cans of soup soup or something you know so i wanted to put that out there and emmy's right like 
the way to pay this forward is to to do it is for me for the 60 day challenge is just do it and be that that shining light there's way there are different ways i know in the yoga world we um we barter a lot with people or we will negotiate with people if they have uh, uh income limitations most healers most light workers listen we didn't get it i mean we didn't get into this line of work to be multimillionaires, did we as <laughs> she laughed i laughed too <laughs> I would have stayed in corporate America if that were the case. <laughs> we did this to help people. And because this this modality has helped us so much, we want to, to provide that. And so most healers, whether it be yoga, Reiki, will work with you. Um, when, uh, when the pandemic happened and a lot of our students weren't working, um, a lot of them reached out and said, I can't afford to pay right now. And Todd was like, come anyway, just come. We'll figure it out later. You know, a lot of um, yoga, I know like Cindy will do like a karma program where if you, you know, you can come like sweep out the studio once a week and get a discount or something, you know, um, I've done it before where people will market for me um, in order to, you know, so there's always things that, you know, that's the beautiful thing about uh, light workers is that there's, they want you, we want you, it, you know, it's, if, if money's an issue, just talk to us, you know, talk to Emmy. If money, it, it, we, uh, trust me, Emmy, we understand, don't we? <laughs> yes. And also I want to say, you know, how are we ever supposed to escape poverty mindset if we don't have access to the tools and resources to get there? Yeah. You know what I mean? I mean, I struggled with poverty my whole life up until about three or four years ago. I was on, we were on government assistance. My whole life on and off, my whole life. So I get it. I get money issues. I get being poor. You know, it. this is the first time in my life. I'm 45 years old. This is the first time in my life where my we've been able to pay our bills and still have a little extra to go do something fun. First time ever. And how, what got us here was shadow work. Both my husband and I have done so much work and, and as we do the work and as things clear up and as things heal, our vibration is raised and we attract more income. And like we were saying a minute ago, income money is just energy. You just have to get to the, the point in your vibration where you're attracting those kinds of things. We can't chase it. Chasing it is actually just going to push it farther away. You have to do the, the inner work and attract it. I know it's hard to understand. It really it was hard for me to understand too. Like, like I, I just didn't get it. Like how, how is working on myself going to, going to increase my financial state? Like that doesn't make any sense to me. And then I experienced it and it's like, what the heck? Yeah. Well, it's funny you're saying that I was thinking about, you know, I'm, I'm not a mother, but I have a dog. I'm a dog mom. And I know this with kids, like sometimes kids won't come when you call them. If you're like the park or something, well, my dog does the same thing. When we go to the dog park, if I call him, like it's time to go, he will run in the opposite direction. And people <laughs> Park's dog park is fucking huge. And I can't catch him because he's speed lightning. And so I learned what I do with Robbie is like a child. I'll say, Robbie, let's go. And if he won't come to be put back on the leash, I'll walk to the gate. And I'll be like, all right, I'm leaving. And I'll walk to the gate to leave. And guess what? He runs right up by me. Same as a kid. If you pretend like, I don't know how many moms have to do that. All right, bye. I'm leaving. And they're like, wait, they run and follow you. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of like at that dog park. Yeah. And and I will say too, with money as well. I mean, I've had a rough time this year because I've had my money stolen. And But I will say that even though that's been so fucking hard for me, like emotionally more than anything, the universe has provided. God has provided. I have not gone without at all. I've been able to maintain everything. And so, you know, jokes on you to those who stole that money. I'm still fine, you know? So, um, and so it, it is true. It's all energy. It's all, and it's all your, and I will say too, a lot of this, I know we kind of know we're over an hour now, but I just want to bring this up before we close out. Um, well, first of all, the 60 day yoga challenge, or six, not yoga, 60 day shadow work challenge will be available to go out, emailed out to you guys by Saturday. January 14th. So this upcoming Saturday, I will put, I'll put a video out. I'll put a post up 
Don't email me for it yet because I need to get organized so I can keep everybody organized because there, there will be drawings and winners at the end of this as well. So I need to keep that organized. Um, second of all, shadow work is a, is a form of emotional cleansing. Now, Emmy, you've been doing an actual cleanse, which brings mm. an emotion. And <laughs> those are fun because you get nice surprises in the toilet. But, um, <laughs> but, uh, we won't go into that in this video. But um, but we're also at the end of the 60 days. Uh, Shanti is going to be uh, kind of her, her section of this is going to be going over a fast, a three-day fast. Now, I do want to say I'm going to go ahead and prep you guys because this is going to be optional. And Emmy and I kind of spoke about this beforehand, and I, and I think Shanti and I are going to also talk about it too. If you are somebody who has struggled with disordered eating, whether that's not eating enough, eating too much, binging and purging, if that is something that has been a struggle for you, I would suggest not doing the fast because we don't want the fast to actually trigger something that's not ready to be triggered yet or needs to be triggered in a different way um, if you are highly vata like myself fasting is not for you okay um and so we're gonna and i'm also gonna probably add a kitchery cleanse so you can do the kitchery cleanse if you don't want to do the fast or you don't have to or you can just eat like normal um and so i do want to i do i did just kind of want to give that just go ahead and get you guys who want to do it mentally prepared it will come at the end of the challenge but also really reflecting upon because i feel like people i know emmy you've talked about your addiction with food i feel like people who have those i mean i don't we all have addictions it's no shame like i even though food is not my addiction i do have other addictions i'll go i'll jump on amazon and shop when i'm stressed out right for shit i don't need you know um how many how many exfoliating lotions do i need to buy you know <laughs> you know so um you know so so we all have our, our coping mechanisms in the way that we kind of avoid and so i just want to give you guys that heads up because i want you guys who are planning on doing the 60 day challenge for something that's serious to really reflect on that for yourself and ask yourself is this really something that's going to help you for those that can fast and it's beneficial it's incredibly beneficial but for those who maybe have some other issues with that, it's obviously your choice, but I would, you know, I don't know if you want to say anything about that, Emmy. Yeah, I, um, as a person who has a history with food addiction and with um, exercise purge, I used to, I couldn't make myself throw up. So I would purge with exercise. I'd exercise for like four hours a day. Oh God, that is considered one of the bulimias is exercise is purging. Through exercise. exercise bulimia. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that is considered one of them. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I have, I have a very structured, um, eating plan that I follow. And so fasting would not be good for me. Plus I'm Vata, like I'm, I'm Vata Kappa. And so when I would, when I would do fast in the past, um, I couldn't last very long. And in fact, I would get delusional and, you know, because food is very grounding. And if you have a lot of Vata, um, that's a lot of air, you know, you're, you're, you're flighty, you're floating around. Food is very grounding for, for Vata people. So just, you know, make sure you pay attention to yourself and your tendencies and take an honest look, um, at if you should. And, and if you do decide to fast, you know, there may be, um, alterations that you can do, like, like using salt in your water or, or, um, doing juices or doing, um, just like a liquid diet, you know, there, there's variations of fasting that you can do. Um, if you really want to participate, um, and you have issues with complete fasting, but yeah, just take an honest look at yourself and make sure that, um, you're not going to be doing something that's going to be potentially harmful. And yes, and Vata, that is one of the, so that's, that's me is because I'm super Vata. And, um, yeah, I'm very, I'm very light. I'm very bony. I don't have a lot of body fat. So it, it what happens for Vatas is that when we get hungry, usually when you think of hunger, you think of hunger pains that comes last for a Vata. So what comes first for a Vata is spaciness, spacing out. And then that's when the delusions start. It gets to the point, like for me, if I don't eat, 
I know when I get started to get spacey, I need to go eat something because I've now I've learned that's what that is. If I don't eat right away, I literally get to the point where I can't even drive because I'm I'm just my body is shut. It's like it cannot. It needs to be grounded. It needs to have that that pull down. And so best people to fast are probably like Kappa Pitta's, you know. But but there again, a Kappa Pitta. If someone's a Kappa Pitta, you could have issues with eating, and, and that again would I would as a professional I would say that fasting is not for you. The Kitchery cleanse that I'm going to add to it as well is good for Vatas if you want to do like a cleanse instead of a fast. The Kitchery cleanse is really good for Vatas because it helps give you that that grounding without the excessive stuff in the food to kind of give you the same um, benefit of, of fasting and cleansing. I just want to just reiterate that to you guys, because it's nothing in life is one size fits all. And that's the thing I love about the dosha system is because if you really break it down in the dose, which you are going to do again on this challenge, you are going to look back at your dosha again. If you really start to understand your uh, specific dosha then you understand your behavioral patterns better and then you can balance that energy better. And when I figured the doshas out, it changed my life completely. Um, and and, and that, that goes the same for exercise. It's not one size fits all. Dieting is not one size fits all. You know, I, I, I driving back from Florida, I was listening to a podcast about a guy who got really into like the teal swan cult and he was doing a bunch of like raw vegan foods. And I was I could kind of see the guy because it was on YouTube, the podcast, and he was definitely Vata. And if you're a Vata, you should not be doing a raw food diet. That will send you to the loony bin. Because raw food, raw fruits and vegetables are Vata. And so you're taking in too much of the energy that you already have excessive amounts of. So you need to be doing like heavily cooked potatoes, heavily cooked sweet potato, like heavily cooked rooted foods, you know? If you're eating fruits, they need to be cooked. Like for me, I can have applesauce, not apples, but applesauce I can have, right? And so I hope that gives you guys some clarity. And once again, you obviously are welcome to do whatever you want to do, but I just want you guys to take the pressure off of your shoulders. I think sometimes overachievers will think, oh, I have to do this because it's part of the template. No, if, if in fact, as a, Emmy is a professional at what she does, I'm a professional, Shanti is a professional, and all three of us are gonna tell you if you struggle with food, do not fast. Don't do that to yourself. So, mom, 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 can you make me some oatmeal, please? Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, I need to go get this poor kid some food. Uh, <laughs> of food. I'm gonna go snack after this too. All right, you guys. We love you deeply. Um, just breathe through these next few weeks. Uh, Saturday, this Saturday, January 14th, I will be ready to start sending out the template almost done you guys and i'm super excited i know i've heard so many people are excited we got all the same prizes we had last time so you'll have drawings all that kind of stuff you're also I'm adding in for the prizes a one hour private lesson with me is one of the prizes as well so anyway you guys we love you and we'll see you soon bye everybody bye, bye. Close to